So, Mom, Dad, how much do you think it costs to raise your children? Now, think about it for a second. You buy them food and clothes. You put them through school. You support their sports teams. You take them here, there, and everywhere. Well, as a matter of fact, according to a recent report from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the cost of raising a child from birth to the age of 17 was just over $241,000 last year, and that doesn't even include the costs of pregnancy or college. That, my friend, is a lot of money, but there are ways to cut that number nearly in half. That is the cost of raising your kids. 78% of that cost is spent on housing, child care, education, food, and transportation. Here are some ways to cut some of those costs. First, housing. Buy your own house if you can. Remember, cutting down one bedroom can save you $400 a month. Next, child care and education. Half of the families who responded reported no costs because they used family members to watch their kids, which turns out to be about $4,000 a year. Third is food. Americans spend almost $40,000 on it. Cut back on going out, buy generic, and use coupons to get this number down. Fourth cost? transportation. Buying a car that's only a year old can cut the price by an average of 20%. Also, keeping up with the maintenance on your car can help save on gasoline costs. Now, are you a new parent? Well, in addition to all of these costs you're likely to rack up, there's another challenge that you'll probably face, and Lisa has more on that. Having a baby changes everything. Your desire to do everything right for that little bundle of joy is so strong. But there are hundreds of decisions to make. Do I go back to work or do I stay home? Daycare or nanny? Cloth or disposable diapers? And it doesn't help that you are bombarded by other people's opinion on all things baby. Well, one thing all moms can agree on, we all have mom guilt. So how can you get back into the working world without agonizing over leaving your little one? Well, you probably won't, but 2004 Nanny of the Year and Mom Michelle LaRoe is here to give us a few tips on finding our own work-life balance. Michelle, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Hey, thanks for having me. First of all, you've seen it firsthand. What are some of the things that moms agonize over the most? You know, the better question is what don't moms agonize over? <laughs> but, you know, um, a recent survey actually showed that, you know, 42% of uh, working moms are stressed out about how they're going to feed their new babies. And given that over, you know, 75% of moms plan to return to the workforce after their babies, that's a lot of moms walking around with some heavy guilt on their shoulders. What are some other things? You know, I think they worry about their child care choice. They uh, worry about if they're spending enough time with their kids. They're worrying if their house is clean, if they're preparing organic meals. <laughs> I think, you know, uh, guilt is mommy-versal. I think there's a lot of things that we can worry about. All right, so let's go to the child care thing. Do you have any advice for moms who are looking for that perfect child care situation? Yeah, tons of advice, um, but to break it down quickly, um, you know, moms really need to know who's caring for their children. Uh, they need to choose a high quality child care provider. That means someone who has a background in caring for children, someone that has a clean uh, criminal background, that has references, has experience, has education, um, and that has a genuine love and interest of caring for children. Um, that's key because if moms aren't confident in their child care choice, they're not going to be able to do anything at work. Uh, but you know, child care is pricey. So what I do is I encourage moms um, for practical ways uh, to save money. So for example, you know, moms can switch from uh, name brand uh, diapers and wipes to store brands, even uh, infant formulas. By switching to a store brand infant formula, they can save you know 50 percent. That's like 600 or more dollars a year to put in their pocket uh, and to put, put, put towards their child care. Hmm. All right. Um, you coined a phrase, mom Taraj. Can you tell me what that means? Sure. <laughs> you know, parents need as much support um, as they can get when it comes to their child rearing choices. So for moms, their mom tourage is the people, places, and things they can pull into their lives to give them more time in their day to spend with their family and more money in their pocket to spend on them. So whether it's outsourcing the dog walking or ordering the groceries online in the middle of the night or, you know, again, switching to, you know, store brands so they have more uh, money in their pocket to spend on child care. Uh, parents need to make wise choices that support their uh, decisions. Now, social media is a big part of everyone's life. And as a mother, it can affect how you feel about yourself. Do you see that? You know, I do. I think that uh, moms have a lot of pressure coming from all sources. Uh, social media, you know, um, TV, radio, everywhere we look, we see the perfect mom. 
And the reality is, is that, you know, just because you feel guilty, it doesn't mean you are guilty. You need to make the right choices for your family and find a supportive network to support you in those choices. And one of those choices is to make time for yourself. Can you give us some advice on how to do that without feeling guilty? You know, that's key because the reality is, is if you don't take care of yourself and meet your own needs, you're not going to be able to meet the needs of your children. So whether it's setting the alarm clock uh, 20 minutes earlier to get up uh, so you can have your cup of coffee in peace or your shower in silence, uh, or it's, uh, you know, fitting in that chapter, you know, before you go to bed. You have to really look for ways to meet your own needs so you're engaged, uh, excited, and ready to meet the needs of your children. All right, Michelle, good advice. Thank you so much. And if you would like to learn more about what Michelle talked about today, you can go to our website, delmarvalife.com, and click on the Show tab. Does it ever feel like parenting can speed up the aging process? We're going to learn more about a procedure that may actually keep your skin looking and feeling much younger. Many people turn to Botox for that anti-aging look, but did you know Botox can go far beyond beauty? Brian Spiros is in Salisbury to explain. Brian? Well, Lisa, not only can Botox help treat fine lines and wrinkles on our face, it can also be used to help treat certain medical conditions, and you may be surprised to learn which ones we'll explain coming up. But first, we've been talking about family. Perhaps you're planning a family trip. Dr. Oz helps us make sure everyone stays healthy. At Family Vacations, is no fun if someone gets sick. Here's what you can do to keep your trip from getting ruined. First, find out if you need to get vaccinated against certain illnesses. Pack a first aid travel kit with antiseptic wipes, sterile bandages, and insect repellent, as well as sunscreen. And on long plane flights and sightseeing tours, remember fluid intake. Kids are extra prone to dehydration, so tote water bottles along the way and stay away from tap water in certain areas. Avoid food from street vendors, which might not be sterile. Instead, pack your own healthy snacks, like dried fruit and nuts, to satisfy those sudden munchies. And one last tip, wash your hands often and keep antibacterial gel on your hand when sinks are hard to come by. Relax, have a great trip.